Hello everyone, this is Jag. In this video, I'm covering everything you need to know on how I make my YouTube videos. Now, this video is going to become a little bit more technical on the camera side. So if you're into photography and videography, stick around. You're going to love this video. Otherwise, you can just skip this video. But first, I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers for commenting, sharing, and supporting my videos. They mean a lot to me. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I promise to you, I will keep making research-based, factual, good quality content for you. And now let's move on to making those YouTube videos. The camera I use to film my videos is Sony A6500. The main reason I went with Sony A6500 is because it shoots in 120 frames per second, which slows down the footage and shoots a really buttery smooth slow motion. Sony A6500 is a mirrorless micro four thirds camera. It's not a full frame, but it does have an in-body image stabilization. One drawback of Sony A6500 is that it does not have a flip screen. However, the camera is very compact and very easy to handle. I shoot most of my B-roll of panning and sliding shots at 120 frames per second. 120 frames per second slows down the footage four times and smooths out any jitters and any imperfections. The lens of my choice is a Sony 35mm f1.8 prime lens. F1.8 provides a really nice bokeh effect. For those of you who do not know what bokeh is, it's blurring out the background completely while keeping the subject in focus. I also use an aperture light when filming indoors. This light has a diffuser screen that diffuses the light very well and takes out any shadows. I also use a tripod with a ball head. Ball head allows me to level my camera without moving the tripod. I also use this remote to trigger my camera. This remote allows me to start and stop the recording on demand, especially when I'm filming myself. The mic I use with my camera to record audio is Rode Video Micro Mic. This is a really small, compact mic and provides a really crisp audio. You might have noticed some background noise in my videos. Now that background noise is because of a freeway that runs about 100 feet from my house. No matter what I do, the background noise is always there. There's some sort of an ambient background noise and it's reflecting off of my house as well. I even tried a clip on mic and the background noise is still there. So no matter what I do, it's always there, so I apologize for that. For taking underwater shots, I bought a waterproof submersible phone case for my iPhone. I didn't want to spend a lot of money to get underwater housing for my camera. So this gadget does a really good job in taking underwater videos on a budget. With this case, I can submerge the phone in water without worrying about damaging my phone iPhone video is not as good as the camera, however, underwater it is not as noticeable. Currently, I'm shooting all of my macro videos with the macro lens for my iPhone. This is a little magnification lens that magnifies the video for that macro look. This is a really good $20 gadget and it does really well in making macro videos. Now, the macro lens I want to get is about $400, but until then, this gadget is doing pretty well. I don't get much distortion using this macro lens with my iPhone. However, iPhone itself is not that great at shooting video in low light. So I shoot all of my macro videos with ambient light. I think the macro lens I'm going to get for my camera is going to do much better. While shooting macro video with my phone, I like to use a selfie stick to have multiple points of contact to create a very smooth video. I also put my iPhone on slow motion to shoot my videos at 120 frames per second. This allows me to make a very smooth slow motion video of flowers and plants. To take very smooth sliding shots, I actually made a homemade camera slider using cabinet roller. I simply got a cabinet roller from a hardware store. And then I attached the ball head camera rig to the cabinet roller. This setup works really well and actually get really smooth shots with this homemade budget camera slider. To shoot stable shots with my camera, I use a Zion Crane. Zion Crane is a motorized gimbal that stabilizes the camera and smooths out any jitters. It helps to take stable shots wherever I cannot use my homemade slider. I also take some shots using a drone. The drone that I use is DJI Mavic Pro. Now there is a second version of this drone out as well. However, this one is doing everything I need from a drone. This drone is a remarkable piece of machinery and it takes things to another level and gives you another perspective. I haven't been using this as much in my videos, but I will be soon because I'm touring some farms and making some videos on how they grow things commercially. So this thing is going to come in really handy for that. The stability and the quality of the video from DJI Mavic Pro is absolutely outstanding. 
That's all about equipment and gear. It takes me about three to four hours to film my video and it takes about another three to four hours to edit my video. So each one of my video is about six to eight hours worth of work. Now I work during the weekdays. I work in IT, I have a full-time job. So I film my videos on weekends, especially the ones of me talking to the camera, which is A-roll. And I shoot almost all of my B-roll on weekends as well. I shoot some video on weekdays to show progress of plant growth. Now if you want to learn more about B-roll, I made a video about everything you need to know on B-roll on my travel and vlog channel called Jag Report. I'll leave a link to the video in the description. And now comes the editing. To edit my videos, I use HitFilm. They also have a free version called HitFilm Express. HitFilm is actually pretty good at editing videos and it is absolutely free. I do not edit my videos on weekends because I like to spend time with my wife. So I edit my videos on weekday nights from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. or so. Sometimes it stretches to midnight as well. So if I'm posting two videos a week, I'll be working two nights a week editing my videos. It does seem like a lot of work and it is a lot of work, but guess what? I love working with the camera, I love making videos, and I love gardening. So it does not feel like work to me at all. When I make my videos, I focus on three main things. I focus on quality, content, and presentation. And I'm constantly improving on quality. I'm doing my best to make the best quality video I can. So six months ago, I took some shots of bees, and now I'm making a video about five beneficial insects you must have in your garden. So I was looking at the footage I took six months ago, and guess what? It's all crap to me. My quality has improved so much that I can't even use those shots in my video. So I had to retake some of the shots of bees. And I made a video about growing radishes as well. And in this video, I covered the complete life cycle of growing radishes over a period of two months. And I noticed something. I noticed that the footage I took two months ago when I first planted radishes was not even that good looking as compared to the footage I took two months later when I harvested radishes. So that tells you that I'm improving in my quality. And the second thing I focus on is content. Content is the king. I make sure I do all my research and provide you with factual information in my videos. And number three, presentation. I make sure I delivered all of this content to you in very short period of time. I don't want to babble on. I don't want to be talking about the weather and all that stuff. I want to give you all the information that you need in very short amount of time so I don't take any more of your time. I first started contributing to my channel in March of 2018, shortly after my 35th birthday and it took me six months to go from zero to 10,000 subscribers. And guess what? It just took another three months to go from 10,000 to 20,000 subscribers. And it's all thanks to you. Thank you for supporting this channel and motivating me to make good quality content. By the end of 2018, the channel has grown to 26,000 subscribers with 2 million cumulative views. And I thank each and every one of you for helping me and motivating me to get to this level. I consider you a part of family. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this inspires you to start your own YouTube channel. And if you do, let me know and I'll support you as well. And I'll see you in another video.